king, you're looking good, yes. Hi, hello, I'm Marina, that one girl that likes to talk a lot about houseplants, and welcome to Millennial Planter. Today, it is officially the end of the month. Well, actually, I think this is going up July 1st, but it is time for do, it is time for do, it is time to do another monthly favorites video. So this is all of my favorite houseplants of June. I usually share my favorite plant products as well on these videos, but I don't have any. So I have seven, my top seven favorite plants instead of my top five. So let's get into it because I'm really excited. And if you happen to like planty videos, which I'm assuming you do, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, help propagate this channel together. And let me know your top favorite plants of June. So we're going to start with probably one of my top, top favorites of the past couple months really. And that's because I really unlocked the secret to this genus of plants. And that is Serapegias. So this is my beautiful string of hearts, my Serapegia woody eye. I'm not sure what, I guess it would just be Serapegia woody eye string of hearts. It's not a string of hearts, Marina. Either way, it is a string of hearts, but it's a heartless string of hearts. So it's in the same family, but it is the string of daggers or the heartless strings. They have a lot of different names, but you can see that shape there. String of spades, some people say, uh, but they do look just like spades and they're super cute. I love them a lot. And just look at this. Look at it. I've started to wrap the vine around the top so I can get some top growth action there and make this plant fuller. It is hanging in my west facing window. It gets, it's a shaded window, so it gets pretty like medium white. But the key to string of hearts, and I have tried this on my regular string of hearts and on my variegated string of hearts, but the key is to up the watering. So if you see here, those hearts are really, really small. And then the further down you go, the fatter and the thicker they get. Y'all, these, these spades, these heartless hearts have gotten so thick. Look at that difference. Look at it. But they have doubled in size and that is literally just from upping the watering. So now instead of waiting for the leaves to get limp, like a lot of people suggest, like when you do the taco test, I wait for the soil to dry out almost completely and then I water it. So it's a fine line. It's pretty much the same way I water my Hoyas. So you're not really teetering on that rotting area because you're still waiting for the soil to dry out, but you're not waiting for them to get super limp and dry, which I, the more I think about it and the more that I'm in my planting journey, that's really just bad advice, the whole taco test thing, because so many times I have killed off new growth and really just slowed a plant's growth down from waiting for it to get that dry because it's not good for the plant. Like that's not how you help new growth. New growth and blooms need water and fertilizer. They don't need to wait until they're completely limp before you water them. But that's a story for another day. But my string of hearts, like I said, I've done it with all varieties up the watering and they've all doubled in size and gotten really fat and thick juicy leaves and it's just so exciting. So this is my string of daggers and I've loved this thing so much. It's so underrated. I got it as a few cuttings from a friend and it has just taken off and thrived and definitely a top favorite. So cute. Next is a plant I think I showed either in an unboxing or a plant vlog type video. So this is going to be showing an update as well. But it is this variegated heart leaf philodendron. I love this plant. I did this, I got this in a trade a couple months ago. It took forever to propagate forever and I thought it was because it was really just like a variegated plant and variegated plants have less chlorophyll so therefore they're going to propagate slower. So it took a while to propagate, took a while to get established but now that it is established it is just taking off and growing like crazy so that is the newest leaf it put out. Look at how gorgeous that is. Oh it's so pretty and then here's some of the lower leaves. This is the original leaf and 
yeah, it's just the variegation is growing strong and doing great. And I just can't wait to have a full lush vine of Hartley philodendron. I, in general, just love the Hartley philodendrons. Like if it comes to like pothos and Hartleaf, I would choose our Hartleaf any day because I just love their smooth texture to them. Like lemon lime philodendron is one of my favorites. The green philodendron I love. The Brazil is amazing. And I'm so happy that I have the variegated Hartleaf to add to that collection. So super excited and it's just so awesome to see this plant grow. I really thought I was gonna lose it for a second when it wasn't propagating for me. That was really nerve wracking. <laughs> but we are good and we are growing. Plant number three is a genus of plants. I really am slowly starting to add more in my collection because I really do like them and they're kind of like the cousin of Hoyas but this is my Ripsalis. Now, I don't remember the name of it because it has a very complicated name, but I will add it on the screen. But look at how cute that is. It has just grown so much for me. It gets a lot of grow light action, and I actually just repotted it into a bigger four inch pot from a two inch because it was super root bound. And it's just, it's so cute. I need to get a little face planter because how cute would this be as like some hair on a face planter? It would be so cute. And also, Another really proud moment, I started this as really small cuttings as well that I got in a plant trade. And yeah, it's always just so rewarding when you get plants that just grow so nice and easy and you propagated them from simple cuttings. So now I think eventually I'm going to cut it and fill the pot out more, but not yet. I'm really enjoying this whole vine, like how it just branches out on its own, I'm excited to see what it does and to see the little tiny blooms. Ripsalis, well, at least I have a pot of Ripsalis downstairs and they had the tiniest, cutest blooms ever. So it'd be cool to get this guy to bloom for me one day. Super cute. I love that genus so much. A lot of these are tiny plants too. I have a lot of tiny plants in this favorites video. So tiny plant number four is my Hoya numeloides, numeloides, numeloides. I'm just going to go with numeloides. <laughs> I clearly cannot say the name of this plant ever, but let's talk about this. So this is my numeloides. And like, first of all, what even is this? Like, gal. Yeah. Can you get your life together? Can you please give me some leaves and not aerial roots? What? It's in my grow tent. So I guess that's why the aerial roots are taking off because it's humid in there. But this is kind of creepy looking. Kind of looks like a millipede or like a saw. Anyways, this strand here is doing absolutely amazing and it's growing so well. I struggled with this Hoya for a long time because it just refused to grow, grow for me, but it would bloom for me and the blooms smell really good, but they're just like an overpowering jasmine smell. It's exactly what it is, a jasmine smell but it's just like your grandmother that put on too much of that perfume and you just go to hug her and you're just like whoop, whoop. That's exactly what this bloom does. <laughs> so it smells good, but it's a little it's a little nauseating for a second. But yeah, so it's a finally growing for me, just that one strand there. And I'm excited. I think these leaves are just so adorable. They're really thick and they're fuzzy. And who doesn't love a fuzzy Hoya? So it's just really exciting to finally see this thing grow. I don't know what else I could have done for it. I guess it just needed time, but now it's just doing its thing and it's really exciting. Now if only this millipede of a vine will grow <laughs> and put some leaves out. Next on my list is going to be an anterium. And I think, oh, I might've shown this one last month. I talked about this plant recently. I talked about this plant a lot, but I can't help it because I just love my Ethereum Gracil so much. It's so pretty. And you know, it kind of looks like a hot mess right now because uh, it's thirsty, but 
Y'all, look at this leaf. Look at it. It is so big and like, what? What? So the exciting thing is, well, look at the first leaves that it got. These are some of the smaller leaves. I got this plant as a seedling. Oh, over a year ago, I want to say, and I got it as Anthurium Bakery, and I'm not sure if that's still a thing or maybe that's an old name, but I was recently told that this is a Gracil, and it looks just like a Gracil, and the inflorescence has the same color berries as a Gracil, so I'm pretty sure this is an Anthurium Gracil. Maybe they have two names. I don't know, but... Um, it's just been so much fun to grow because for a while I was kind of like in no man's land and I didn't know what to expect with this plant. So I was just letting it do its thing. It pollinated for me twice already. I have gotten, I think maybe 12 seedlings from those seeds. So it's been really fun. It introduced me into the world of anthurium pollination. I've learned so much about this plant and about anthuriums just from just from her and honestly this is probably top five favorite plants in my entire collection because it's been so fun to grow it is one of the easiest anthuriums as well i can't recommend this plant enough if you want to get into anthuriums especially the strappy anthuriums but she's just amazing this leaf here is dying i'm not sure why hopefully it doesn't have any pests I swear, I always end up inspecting my plants when I'm filming. Anyways, also, I just uh, recently put her on my wall. So I have a planter, I have a plant hanger, and I drilled it into my wall, and now she just sits there. And it's perfect. I think I want to eventually fill up my whole wall with a bunch of pendant anthuriums. I have three of them at the moment, and on a shelf, it's really hard to store these guys because look at them. Like... They're all over the place. So in a hanging planter, like it just, it's so much better and it just adds so much to like the aesthetic of a plant room, you know? You know, but anyways, Anthurium Gracil, such a beauty, so amazing. She's putting out this new leaf now and I can't wait to see what that looks like. This is one of her, this leaf that I showed is one of her latest leaves. Uh, so yeah, I'm just excited to see how this one grows and see if they get even bigger and longer. Oh, I just get so excited thinking about it. But yeah, Anthurium <laughs> Gracil. So since we're on the topic of pollination and seeds, this leads me to six, plant number six. And this is my Aeschgenanthus, aka my Black Pagoda Lipstick Plant. Whoa, look at that. Look at that pattern. Oh, that is beautiful. And then look at it from the undersides. Whoa, that's insane. So beautiful. I love this plant so much. It's gotten so lush and so full. And really, I just love lipstick plants so much. I have a regular all green one on my top shelf behind me that I started as a one node cutting this this big and it has just grown so much for me same with this one i got this one as a tiny little probably two inch starter plant and it has just grown into this beast of a plant and it is so low maintenance so low maintenance because for a while it was in the corner of my hoya shelf and I, it was not in an easy accessible place so i would just water it whenever i remember which isn't always a good idea which we just talked about but she was able to go through it and still grow and that whole drought period also led her to give me seeds which was really exciting so they have these little seeds called parachute seeds that look like dandelions so uh it had a whole seed pod that i had missed and i guess they self-pollinate or maybe a fly or a fungus gnat came in here and pollinated the flower which i totally missed i missed the seed pod i missed everything so eventually i pulled the plant out and i was like you know let me look, look let me pay this plant some attention and i saw all these like white fluffy things on it and for a second i thought it was like spider babies which is my worst fear but, uh, i can't even talk about it but it was seeds and it was the cutest little dandelion seeds so i went and i planted them up and they have been pretty slow growing seeds they just sprouted for me and i think it probably took 
close to two weeks for them just to barely sprout. And not all of them have sprouted, so I'm not sure if all of them have germinated, but I'm also not sure maybe there's a different germination process for parachute seeds. I don't know. I should probably do more research. If you know more, leave it in the comments and help educate me. I'm still learning, but it was really exciting. It's always such a fun process when your plants just unexpectedly give you seeds. But yeah, <laughs> um, my Black Pagoda lipstick plant. That was a lot to say. I'm sorry. Went on a huge tangent there. Anyways, <laughs> uh, tangent over because we are on our last plant, plant number seven. And of course, it had to be another Hoya. And it is Hoya Sigitalis. Sigitalis? Yeah, Hoya Sigitalis. Sigillatus. Sigillatus. Sigitalis or Sigillatus? I've heard both. I say Sigitalis. Oh, that coffee is kicking in. Oh, but look at this little cutie. So this is my super sun-stressed Hoya Sigillatus and it has just once again been doing the most. Uh, this plant used to be a lot longer, but you all know me. I cut it for a trade and it was just stunted for a long time uh it didn't do anything and i've noticed that some hoyas are like that you cut it twice or three times usually three times and then they just throw a hissy fit which i get it i i get it i'm sorry so i'm trying to really <laughs> uh pace myself when it comes to cutting my hoyas especially especially the smaller ones just to cut them once and then that's it and then let them establish that new vine let that new vine do really well on its own and then maybe cut it again because i've stunted a lot of hoyas from doing that and it really sucks because i've waited like a year for a plant a hoya to bounce back after cutting it for a trade so Sigillatus was one of them, but now it is just doing amazing in the grow tent, just loving life. That's the latest vine it cut, it came out with, and it's just filling out so nicely. And it makes me so happy because I really do love this Hoya. It kind of reminds me of Hoya Claudata with that variegation on it, that splashiness. And the leaf shape is super cute. I love how elongated they are and the sun dressing. So beautiful. Just a really fun Hoya and one that I just love having in my collection. Well, that wraps it up for this top favorites video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Sorry I went on a couple of uh, tangents there, but here we are. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you all are staying safe, sane, happy, and healthy. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the thumbs up button, you know, all the things. It really helps my channel out, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!